Good afternoon, Peter. Here's your machine, the Breville Dual Boiler Model DS920. And so, uh, as you saw in the photos, it's in good condition. I mean, it's pretty much the scratches and dents around here, the f around the front. Uh, other than that, not nothing to mention. It's really, really clean all around. And I've just finished doing the service. Um, so that's disco back flush, checking for leaks and pressure, and uh, checking the pressure, make sure, making sure everything's good. So I'm very happy with, with the machine on the inside. I mean, it's barely used, only used for a year. Um, I will be making a double shot latte this afternoon to show you how to, how to use the machine and obviously confirm that it's in full working order. Uh, I like to begin my sessions with a blank shot. So that means it's running hot water through the system, through the handle, through the grip head, just to warm things up. Um, and if I pull my cup underneath, it'll also warm up that cup, obviously, with the hot water. Uh, and if there's any dirt or coffee grounds, this will clean it up as well. So it's a good step to do. I recommend it. Very well. Um, just filming my milk now. Cup is nice and hot now. I'm gonna put it put it on the side while I grind the coffee. Uh, I want to take this water filter out, dump any hot water, and dry it well with a tissue before grinding. You want to start with a dry water filter before the grinding. Um, this is the double basket, I'm going to be using that to make the latte. So this will take about 20 grams, 21 grams of coffee, um, of ground coffee. Uh, and that 21 gram quantity, I want to double that in terms of espresso. So I want to be getting around 40, 42, 45, roughly. 40 to 45 grams of espresso. That's the ratio most, most people use, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. Uh, if you like your coffee longer or shorter, feel free to do whatever you'd like. This is just a, like a good starting point to test your, your beans. Um, you need to be using the scale to, to, to measure all this, obviously. If you don't have a scale, you can still eyeball it and um, just get used to the, to, to the amount of coffee you grind as opposed to having to grind and measure every time. I don't usually measure and calibrate things like this, only when I'm getting a new bag of beans or when I'm cleaning the machine, etc. Okay, so. Very well, this is a nicely tamped bed of coffee. I'm going to be measuring for that. 20 and a half grams. That's good, I'm happy with that. 20 and a half grams. So, this basket takes between 20, 18, I would say 18 to, 20, to 22. Um, I think 20 is a good um, spot. It's a sweet spot for this. Um, if you don't have a scale or um, want to know how much coffee uh, to put in, a good way to know is grind enough coffee uh, to fill about the basket, this is before tamping, so grind enough coffee to fill the basket and then press it down. And then when you press it down, obviously apply firm even pressure and then check the depth of the tamper. Usually 20 grams is about the depth of this silver cap on the tamper, if you can see that on, on camera. This part here, this is about the depth, so I can't go any lower. If it's too high, so if it's all the way up to here and you can't press it down any further, that's too much coffee. And obviously if it sinks all the way to the bottom, that's too little coffee. 
So about roughly the, the depth of this silver cap is how much coffee you're putting. Or if you want to just eyeball it, this is about like half a centimetre, maybe three quarters of a centimetre from the edge. Cool. With that out of the way, I'm going to put this back, clean the edges, lock in the quarter filter nice and tight. It doesn't have to be really, really tight, only as tight as necessary. Um, obviously, if you don't lock it in tight enough, it might come off or leak from that from the sides, obviously. Um, so just lock it in tight enough and don't force it. Um, here's the hot water. I'm going to dump that out. Um, if you want to use the hot water tap for whatever reason, so if you want to make this a long black coffee, you can use the hot water tap. Or if you want to brew tea, if you want to preheat your cups, you can use the hot water tap. It's good. I like to add a little bit of hot water just to help my sugar dissolve, which will help my espresso mix with the sugar. Regarding the grinder and grind size, uh, I think you can use pre-ground coffee with this machine. You just have to use the uh, you just have to use the pressurized dual wall filters. These filters are made with two layers, and they will pressurize your coffee, even if it's pre-ground or bought from the shops. Um, the single wall on the on the left here. These are more for fresh coffee, freshly ground coffee. Um, so if you have a grinder, a proper grinder, uh, these will work well and give you really high quality espressos. Whereas the, the ones on the right, these are only for pre-ground coffee. So if you're struggling with pressure um, or you, you can't be bothered measuring and changing the, the grinder settings, the pressurized baskets will work. But they won't test as nice as the single wall baskets. Um, with the single wall baskets, of course, they're a little bit harder to use. You just have to have a good grinder. You have to adjust the grind size to the right setting. So if it was, if if your coffee is running too quick and the pressure is very low, um, I mean, assuming you're using fresh beans, a lot of the time, low pressure and runny coffee is because of a large grind size or um, a small dose. So a very little amount of coffee. So if you put 15 grams instead of 18 your coffee will naturally be too runny. Um, if the grind size is too coarse, that will make the coffee runny as well, because water will just pass through. If the grind size is very fine, or if you pack the port with too much, then water will have a very hard time passing through, so the coffee will come out very, very slow, very short, uh, and the pressure would be skyrocketing. Um, although this machine does have a safety valve at nine and a half bars, so the pressure will Pretty much never exceed nine and a half bars, which is really nice. Yeah, so I think that's the basics. It's you have to experiment and ex try different grind sizes. Uh, I would recommend starting halfway through the grind out settings. Run some coffee, like a double shot coffee. Too runny, make it finer by a few numbers. Too coarse, uh, sorry, too slow, make it coarser by a few numbers. Uh, I've already I'm I'm using my other machine to grind. So it should already be set up to good grind sizes and a good dose. Um, so I'm not worried about that. Let's see how we go. So I'm going to press the two cup button. The coffee will come out. And I want to pay attention to how it's coming out from the spouts. I also want to pay attention to the pressure. I want the pressure to, to be around eight bars, nine bars, not lower than eight bars. If it's lower than eight bars, I might need to grind finer. Um, if the co coffee is coming out very slow or very quick, again, I'm going to have to adjust my grind size. Uh, so yeah, I want to be get getting around double of what I put in. Like I said, uh, I'm not sure if I said this before, but uh, a good ratio to use is a 2 to 1 ratio. So yeah, I already said that. So I'm going to be aiming for about 40 to 45. If it's less than 45, I'm going to be increasing my grind size. If it's more than 35, Sorry, if it's more than 45, I'm going to be re reducing my grind size. Let's see. 
This is this button will go for 30 seconds naturally. This will go for 20 seconds. Perfect. That's nine bars. And the flow is nice and smooth. I'm very happy with it. It's around eight and a half now. Nine, eight and a half. Uh, nice smooth flow. Good pressure. I think this is this is gonna be a good shot. Maybe a little bit too runny, I'm not exactly sure. Just a touch. I need a scale can confirm this. So we got oh, not too bad. Um, we got 37 grams. So that's a little bit less than the 40 I was aiming for, but honestly, it looks fine. And it's probably more than drinkable. It's probably really good. It smells really good. If it was closer to 30 or 35, I would worry more. But 37 is so close to 41 that I'm not even bothered. So yeah, I should have clarified. It should be within the 41 ballpark. It doesn't have to be exact. I mean, coffee is not about maths and numbers. It's about taste. It tastes good, so I'm not, I'm not concerned one bit. Um, that's my espresso. Obviously, this is a dual boiler machine, so I could be making coffee and steaming at the same time. Uh, you have steam, very powerful steam, I might say, uh, available at any time. Uh, with this lever, you can open it halfway to slow it down. You can, put, or you can open it all the way if you're in a hurry, if you want to get full, um, full pressure, which is really, really versatile. Um, before making the milk, I'm going to um, tell you to, to do a, a blank shot again. So knock the coffee out uh, and you may want to buy a, um, a knock box if you don't have one already. I have one to sell. So uh, knock your coffee out and run another blank shot. This will clean up the coffee grounds and oils in the group head and in the handle. So it's like a two birds, one stone situation. So a single shot will suffice. That's about it. Just enough to rinse. And then lock it back. It's as easy as that. Ideally, to utilize the dual boilers and to uh, ensure you have the freshest coffee, you want to be doing the milk and the espresso at the same time. Maybe even beginning with the milk and then doing your espresso. Um, otherwise, what's the point of getting a dual boiler? Am I right? Yeah, so I'm not going to let my espresso shot sit for too long. I'm going to go straight into the milk steaming. This is the jug that I have. Uh, your jug is this one. It's a large jug. If you wanted a smaller one, let me know. I have smaller ones. But this should be good for one and a half to two cups. Um, you, can, you, can, you can put one serving in it and it will still work as intended. It just it will fit two cups easily. Um, yeah, with the steaming technique, I want to be using, firstly, cold milk. Uh, cow milk, preferably, if you can. Uh, but you want to start with the cold milk. That will help it steam better. You want to fill it about halfway in the jug which is for my drug, one serving, um, one serving of, of latte. You want to put the wand at an angle, sort of like that, and close to the edge of the jug here, so that as it's steaming, it's also spinning the milk in a vortex. And you want the tip to be close to the surface of the milk. Uh, this is going to inject and incorporate air into the milk and give it that fluffy, smooth texture. Um, if you stay too close to the surface for a long time, you'll get, you'll get a cappuccino, very bubbly, very volumetric. If you only do it for half the time, say, only for 15 seconds aerating the milk, you'll get more of a latte. So, there's a technique to it, there's a little bit of a learning curve, but it really pays off. And with some practice, you can get latte art results. You can do nice designs and flowers and love hearts, etc. So, it's, it's very rewarding, I would say. Um, yeah, give it a purge like, like I'm doing now just to get rid of any cold steam or w water that's built up just to make sure that you're getting strong steam right off the bat. Putting it at an angle close to the surface of the milk and opening all the way. The steam power is very powerful here, much stronger than the single boiler machines. 
So you won't be steaming for a long time, maybe 30 seconds tops, 30, 40 seconds tops. Uh, so you'll need some technique to be able to operate it properly. If this is, if you find this is too much pressure for you, obviously you can open it halfway and only work with half the pressure. So I'm going to raise the jug now. I don't want to stay close to the surface for too long. Raise the jug and keep the milk spinning in a vortex. When I can't touch it for too long, I'm going to turn it off, which is there. That was really quick. Uh, when I can't touch the jug, the jug for too long, that's about 60 degrees. So touch the sides if you can't touch it for half a second. That's about 60 degrees. Before moving on, just give it a purge. You don't want this to be stuck with milk. Give it a purge, then wipe it with, an, with a damp cloth straight away. Uh, and you want to wipe it straight away because this gets really hot and the milk will cake and stick to it very badly. Make sure you clean all the way up, all the way down, the bottom, the rear, and that's it. Make sure you wipe it here as well. Um, that's a latte on the Breville Jewel Boy one. Uh, very nice to use machine, very easy to use as well. And um, if you take care of it, it will take care of you. The machine will remind you when to descale and back flush. I recommend doing the back flush, but not the descale. It's been proven to be problematic in the past. Um, I've certainly received a lot of machines that have been broken after trying the descale cycle. So you may want to do it at your own risk or just bring it to me for a service. I'm only saying this because I've seen a lot of broken machines after the descale cycle. Um, yeah, and change the water filters on time, keep the wand clean, keep the machine dry, and that's about what you need to do to keep it in good shape. Obviously, if it ever makes a weird noise or starts dripping water from the bottom or makes a hissing, steam leaking noise, obviously bring it back to me. Um, but it shouldn't do that for a long, long time because I've just checked everything and it's, it checks all the boxes. I'm very happy with this machine. In fact, I'm considering upgra upgrading to this model soon uh, because I think it's a good, it's a good um, sweet spot. Anyway, hope you enjoy the machine. I'm going to be showing you the the coffee now looks like we've been we've, we've um, kept the milk and shot sitting out for too long so it's not my best work I can tell but anyway when you get when you when you're done with the milk you want to tap down the jug to break any bubbles and spin it around keep it mixed up then knock it down again get rid of the bubbles spin 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 do this two or three times until the milk comes out silky smooth, which which is doing which is what's happening now. Now, uh, I can't even speak. <laughs> yeah, cool. My cat wants some milk. Sorry about that. Anyway, here's the. Not quite a hot, but close to it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's that's a latte on the Jubola. Here is the final result. Um, despite the looks, I'm sure it tastes great, as it always does. Um, hope you enjoy the machine. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. All I have to say about this machine is that um, beans are very important. Uh, some beans will brew nicely, some will be horrible to drink, so um, obviously the more expensive you go, the better the results, but you, you can still find good quality beans for not too expensive. Happy to chat to you about that when you come here, and I'll see you soon. Cheers.